All right, let's have a quick look at how the locker actually works. To explain how it works, I first really need to explain what the difference is between a conventional diff and the locker and how they both work. So we have a differential in place, or we have a diff in place to, um, to allow the wheels to spin at different speeds. So when you're going around a corner, the outside wheel can travel, uh, or the outside wheel travels a lot further than the inside wheel. And if we didn't have that diff in place to allow the wheels to spin at different speeds, they both spin at the same uh, speed and you'd break traction and you'd be slipping and sliding and you'd be all over the place. So that's why we have the diff in place. So a conventional diff allows the inside wheel to travel slower than the drive shaft. That's why when you break traction on say wet grass and you just get one wheel spinning, the other wheel can stay perfectly still and you don't go anywhere. How the locker differs or how the locker is, is different to a conventional diff is it doesn't allow either of the wheels to travel slower than the drive shaft. That way you're always maintaining drive to, to both wheels. How it creates the differential action is that it will allow one wheel to travel faster than the drive shaft. So that way when you're going around a corner, the inside wheel, which is traveling slower than the outside wheel, is traveling at the same speed as the drive shaft. So you have positive drive to that wheel. The outside wheel can travel faster than that uh, inside wheel and faster than the drive shaft uh, as you go around the corner, which creates the, the differential action. Now let's actually have a look at the locker and how it does that and how it achieves that. Right, so here we have the locker all put together in my hands. And here's the, uh, the important motion of it. You can see in here we've got a couple of little springs and that's what creates well, the ability for the locker to move. Oh, just slipped. You can see how the locker is moving in and out. Now that's important because I will show you why in a second. So we have our, our and our drive pinion goes through the middle like such and creates that turning action. And you can see how you can see how the locker moves in and out on the drive pinion. Okay, so I put the rest of the locker down because I don't have five hands to, to show you in this demonstration. So I've got half the locker here, we've got the drive pinion, we've got the drive gear, and then we've also got the axle gear. And they all sit together as, as such. So we've got our drive gear, putting our drive into the, into the locker, and that sits in there like such. There's actually minuscule spaces, but I'll over-exaggerate over the, uh, the space for the demonstration. So the drive pinion sits up against there like that. And because that's, or because of the shape of the, uh, the drive gear, the, the turning motion is trying to push that, that mechanism out. So that's what creates your outer force that acts against those springs that we saw uh, a little bit earlier on. So when you've got drive into the locker, everything's all locked up and the, the the springs can't come back this way. So how the how it unlocks is when the outer wheel starts turning faster than the drive gear, than the uh, than the drive pinion, is that space now changes. You can see in the middle here that when that space changes and it, it all gets unloaded, the locker can now move in and out against the drive pinion and against those springs. So now we have the drive, or now we have a force coming from the outer wheel through the axle gear, and that that turning motion pushes the drive gear back in against those little springs that we saw, and those springs are quite light to to, to push in. And then the drive, or oh, sorry, the axle gear, then steps around the drive gear like that, allowing the outer wheel to spin faster than the inner wheel. And that is how the differential action is created with the locker.